Hello everybody and welcome to your fifth XNA tutorial uh, learning how to create a platformer so in this tutorial uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finishing off the animation class okay uh, so oh I said I was gonna finish off the unload stuff but uh, we could honestly the all we need to do is just do content unload everything else can remain uh, the same uh, if anything you could just say text is equal to string dot empty uh, you could set it that position is equal to vector to zero uh, we could do source rect is equal to let's see if they have something for rectangle yeah rectangle empty let's see if they have that for vector 2 nope so we just set to vector 2 0 and uh, yeah you could do that for the everything else we could say image is equal to null and color is equal to color color dots I don't know. They don't have anything. Zero. I guess I'll just set to new. I'll just set to a black color, maybe, or just leave it the way it is. So, anyways, for the for the update, we have nothing that uh, each each animation is going to do things to update things differently. And before I forget, there was one thing that I forgot to add, and uh, it's a boolean variable called is active, and it's going to be really important in the update method. And uh, we'll set is active to false by default. Okay. And we're going to be you we're going to be making some properties um, up here. Uh, I'll just make one right now that I know we'll need uh, soon, and we'll just have. Uh, the set is active equals to value and for the get we return is active okay so for the last but not least for the draw animation we're gonna draw everything the exact same okay uh, we might want to change within different animation classes but essentially everything's gonna be drawn the same uh, so what we want to do first is we want to say that origin uh, is equal to new vector 2 is going to be no first of all we have to check if image is equal to null so if image if image not equals to null then we set origin equals to new vector 2 we take uh, the source rect dot width divided by 2 and the source rect dot height and let me move this over so you can actually see it divided by two okay and uh... the reason why we say source rect instead of the image is width is that we, we want to set it on the center of the image right so if we have a source rectangle or something we're cropping on the picture you want to the center of the, the whole image that we cropped out okay so we want the origin to be at the center of the images because whenever we do zoom animations or something like that we want it to zoom we want to have a focal point where it zooms into so if we do zooming we want to zoom into the center most point of the object not in the, the top left corner of it okay so we're, we set the origin and then we do sprite batch dot draw and what we're going to do is we're going to draw the image uh, we draw the position plus the origin Be the reason why we do this is because uh, normally uh, if we set the origin to uh, the middle of the object, say, say our image is width is 32 by 32, okay? And our origin is therefore 16. So basically, it's going to treat the center of the object as uh, the zero of that image, if that makes sense. So if we say draw that image at coordinate 0, 0, it's going to draw that, that middle, the center point of that image at coordinate 0, 0, which is not what we want. We still want to go by the regular coordinate system where it's at the, it reads at the top left of the image. We still want to go by that, but we want to be able to identify things by the certain origin. So to make things look how we want it to look, we say position plus origin. 
so we next we put in the source rectangle and for the color we'll put color dot white and for the rotation we put in our rotation variable for the origin we put the origin in there uh, then we put the scale I believe we have the spread effects spread effects dot none and last but not least we'll just put no for the depth we'll just put 0, 0.0 f and uh, that is the draw command for the images right so we also have to say not else if but if because we could we could do an animation with both text and images and the same thing so we say if text is not equal to string dot empty uh, for the origin, we have to change the origin this time because we're not doing it on an image. We're doing it on a, we're doing it on text. So we say it's equal to new vector two, and you want it to be set center on the text. So we say font dot measure string. Uh, we put in our text in there dot x, and we do that for the uh, divided by two, and we say font dot measure string text dot y divided by two so we got our origin which is in the center and then we have to do sprite batch draw string this time so the font is what we're going to use we have we have our text we have our position plus the origin and then we have our color that we specify our rotation our origin the scale sprite effects none and last but not least, the depth with the 0.0f. So now we have our, our draw command set up, okay? So now we can uh, head over to our fade animation class and we inherit from the animation class. Now, uh, so what we're going to do is the fade animation class is going to need a few variables of its own that other, other things that derive from the fade animation don't need. So we're going to need a, a Boolean variable and uh, name increase. Oh, another thing we forgot to put in animation is an important one. Uh, well, we could put it up here as well, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be alpha, and the default alpha value is going to be uh, one, and that means it shows the whole image. Okay, so. so they're both equal to one okay so we have we have our increase and we have a float value called uh, fade speed okay uh, there's also some some other things that we're going to want to include uh, so first of all we're going to want to uh, in, uh, import our namespaces uh, so we have a content and we have graphics okay so there's also one thing some things that we're going to need so we're going to want to have a time span time span uh we're going to have a default default time and we'll have a timer or well, we also want to have a boolean variable uh that no actually yeah boolean variables that start timer and we also want to uh, have a float value uh, let's name it uh, I don't know activate value or whatever okay so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna override the load content and let me just put these things into view so you guys can see it so we have our base, we load the content, and for this we're going to just set, uh, for the default content, we're just going to set increase is equal to false, we'll say fade speed is equal to 1.0f times game time, no, times what, float, uh, game time, oh, we don't even have game time in there, uh, actually, actually we just leave it as 1.0 F uh, for our default time which we'll name it new time span uh, and we'll set it as to one second for our timer 
we'll set it equal to our default time and for our activate value we will set that to 0, 0.0 F okay so 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 I'll end it at this uh, I'll end it at that right now uh, basically uh, for the next tutorial we're just going to be working on the update and how we're going to actually handle uh, doing fade animations and such like that and we're going to be adding in some properties and stuff in order to be able to change certain values and so on and so forth uh, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial thanks for watching and bye